almost since time began, mushrooms have been enjoyed for their distinctive flavor, texture, and mystique. Ancient Greeks have referred to mushrooms as food of the gods. During the Roman Empire, Roman law regulated mushroom sales. Only designated mushroom collectors could collect them and once cooked, they were served on silver platters with amber cutlery. The ancient pharaohs believed that mushrooms were the plants of immortality and reserved them as the privilege for royalty only. Today, commercially grown mushrooms are enjoyed by millions of people around the world. And although they are readily available in every supermarket throughout the year, it is a misconception to think that they are easy to grow. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Commercial mushroom farming is one of the most technologically advanced and sophisticated agricultural industries in the world. Join us as we take you on the mushroom journey from the farm to the supermarket. Different strains of mushrooms require different types of compost, also known as substrate. And preparing this selective compost is the most challenging part of the mushroom growing process. Organisms that encourage the mushroom to flourish must be made to grow and those that destroy crops must be killed off. The basic compost ingredients are water to assist the composting process and provide nourishment to the mushrooms, straw which creates the correct structure for air circulation and is a source of carbohydrates. Chicken litter, which provides nitrogen and supplies the microbes needed for the composting process. And finally, gypsum, which improves the structure, buffers the pH and assists in releasing the ammonia formed during the composting process. These ingredients are combined in three distinct steps to form the compost, also known as the substrate. In the pre-wet process, the straw is thoroughly soaked to remove the hard shiny layer from the wheat straw making it more water absorbent and allowing easier access to the carbohydrates in the straw. After being soaked for a predetermined time, the bales are then sprayed with water and eventually broken up. During this five to six day period, the temperature of the straw is carefully monitored, ensuring that it is always lower than 60 degrees Celsius. During the premix, the chicken manure and gypsum are mixed into the straw and loaded into a large concrete bunker. The gypsum helps to keep the compost open and the chicken litter acts as a nitrogen source to speed up microbial activity. As the ingredients interact with each other, the compost starts to heat up, the temperatures reaching as high as 70 degrees Celsius. During the next four to seven days, the compost is taken out and mixed as required. At phase 1, additional chicken manure and gypsum are added to the mixture, resulting in chemical reactions that cause temperatures to reach 80 to 82 degrees Celsius. No odor is emitted during this process due to the design of specially built bunkers with underfloor ventilation and an open or partly open top. This structure eliminates smell pollution and encourages the growth of oxygen-dependent bacteria. To ensure thorough mixing of the ingredients, the compost is taken out, mixed and returned to the bunkers every three to four days. After just seven days, those huge bales of straw are converted into a soft brown compost. It has a caramelized smell and a high moisture content. Once the compost is ready, it is transferred via conveyor system for pasteurization which lasts for six days. It is conducted under carefully controlled conditions in specifically designed tunnels with aerated plenum floors. This phase has two purposes. Firstly, pasteurization, to destroy unwanted fungi and pests that might steal nutrients from the good guys. Secondly, conditioning, to create specific food for the mushrooms by clearing the ammonia and freeing up the carbohydrates. This is achieved through strict climate control and ventilation. Once the compost is stable and free from ammonia, it is cooled to around 25 degrees Celsius by circulating filtered air through the material. Finally, the moment has arrived and the compost is ready to be spawned. 
Mushroom seeds known as spawn or mycelium are grown on sterilized grain and mixed into the compost. The spawn compost is placed back into the tunnels for incubation, which takes place in purpose-built spawn running tunnels. These rooms are well insulated and equipped with air handling systems to maintain temperature and humidity levels and to ensure the air is dust free. The mushroom mycelium starts growing into the compost. This growth is monitored by wall samples that show the daily progress. After about 15 to 19 days, the compost is completely colonized by the mushroom mycelium. The white particles shown are the mushroom mycelium. During this time, temperatures are maintained by circulating filtered air. The humidity is kept high and is monitored to check for consistency in moisture content and the carbon dioxide concentration. After this process, the colonized compost is transferred into the growing tunnels and mushroom growing can begin. Mushroom supplements are added as additional nutrients. As this is often a bulk process, the colonized compost is transported to the individual farms by truck. A mixture of black peat and sugar beet lime is added to the compost. It will form the top part of the casing. In South Africa, natural peat is highly threatened, so the mushroom industry took a decision to import peat from Europe where it is abundantly available. The colonized compost is compacted together with the peat, which forms a 4 to 5 cm thick layer on the compost. This is called the casing layer. The casing layer has to be applied as evenly as possible and the bed should be watered once the compost is completely covered. Frequent watering must be done in the first five days. The casing layer protects the compost from drying out and as the pinheads grow towards the surface, they absorb the water and microflora from the surrounding peat and compost. Once the pinhead is greater than 5 mm in diameter, the watering stops. This allows the casing layer to act as a water reservoir, supplying the mushrooms with moisture during the growth phase. After 9 to 11 days, the crop is tricked into fruiting with a simulated season change. The air temperature is reduced by about 10 degrees Celsius over a 3 to 5 day period. Oxygen is introduced into the area to reduce the carbon dioxide concentration in the air. The mycelium reacts to the seasonal change by reproducing so that its species can survive the oncoming environmental change it senses. Sophisticated climate control units allow the growers to manipulate the environment to get the results they want. Should the growers require fewer pinheads, they will use a higher temperature and higher carbon dioxide level. If more pinheads are required, then lower temperatures and lower carbon dioxide levels are used. Fruiting occurs in breaks or flushes beginning about 17 days after casing and continues at weekly intervals. Generally, three flushes are picked from one crop. Thereafter, the compost and casing is removed to make room for the next crop. As mushrooms are extremely delicate and easily bruised, they are picked by hand. This makes the South African mushroom industry a huge job creator. All mushrooms are individually picked and are graded as they are harvested and placed directly into the store packaging or punnets. White button mushrooms and small brown mushrooms known as portabellinis are picked at maximum size before the veil opens. The portabellas, big browns, are only harvested once the veil is fully opened. At the end of the mushroom crop, the growing room and its contents are sterilized with live steam. The compost temperature is held at 70 degrees Celsius for 8 to 12 hours, eliminating any pests that might transmit diseases to new crops on the farm. After harvesting, the mushrooms are cooled as soon as possible. 
they are hand sorted, weighed and prepared for distribution and then delivered to retailers where they are displayed on refrigerated shelves for consumers to purchase. Sliced mushrooms are also prepared and packaged at this point. We grow mushrooms. We sell mushrooms. We cook mushrooms. We eat mushrooms. We love mushrooms. May your soils be rich and your spores be many.